I'm just pouring out my heart. Like, you know, I'm, I know I messed up. I know I did this. I know I didn't do that. For those who followed R&B from the mid-1990s to the mid-2000s, Jaheim Hoagland is a name well-known. He gained rapid recognition upon his debut, showcasing remarkable talent and amassing a substantial fan base while securing a place on the U.S. Billboard chart. However, in the subsequent years, despite achieving the kind of success many aspire to, Jaheim Hoagland left his fans disillusioned as he tarnished his own image amidst a series of scandals. This video offers a glimpse into the authentic persona of Jaheim Hoagland, an opportunity not to be missed. Jaheim Hoagland's early life was shaped by the challenging circumstances of his upbringing in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Born and raised in the Memorial Parkway Public Housing Project, Jaheim faced adversity from a young age. He candidly shared with Dub CNN that his childhood in the projects was nothing short of a disaster, marked by various hardships. One of the defining moments of Jaheim's early life occurred when he was just two years old, a time when most children are barely beginning to explore the world around them. Tragically, his father passed away, leaving a void that would profoundly impact his upbringing. However, despite this devastating loss, Jaheim's mother Julie exhibited unwavering strength and resilience as she took on the role of sole provider for Jaheim and his two brothers. Julie's determination was not the only pillar of support for Jaheim. The family leaned on their tight-knit extended family, which included Jaheim's grandfather, the late soul singer Hawagi Lands. This musical connection in the family would later play a significant role in Jaheim's life, sparking his interest in pursuing a career in music and ultimately shaping his destiny. Growing up in the challenging environment of the projects, Jaheim found himself gravitating towards the older individuals in the neighborhood, mirroring their actions and choices. Unfortunately, this led him down a path that eventually resulted in his incarceration on a criminal charge. It was during this period of confinement that Jaheim was compelled to reevaluate the course of his life. Jaheim Hoagland's journey into the world of music began as a serendipitous moment that would shape the rest of his life. One fateful day, he found himself at a recording studio surrounded by some of the guys from his neighborhood. It was in that studio that he experienced a pivotal moment that would change the course of his life. With a sense of spontaneity and a passion for singing, Jaheim stepped into the recording booth and belted out a rendition of Luther Vandross's classic hit, Never Too Much, set to a club beat. The atmosphere in the studio immediately lit up as everyone present was captivated by Jaheim's soulful and heartfelt performance. His powerful voice and emotional delivery struck a chord with everyone in the room, and it became abundantly clear that Jaheim possessed a remarkable talent. The positive response to his impromptu performance at the recording studio became a turning point for Jaheim. It served as a wake-up call, inspiring him to make a crucial decision. He decided to leave behind the streets and the potentially perilous path he had been following, and instead, he dedicated himself to honing his singing skills and pursuing a career in music. At the remarkably young age of 15, Jaheim's talent had already reached a level where he could perform a challenging Luther Vandross song, A House Is Not A Home, with remarkable grace and skill. His talents shone brightly when he took the stage at the iconic Apollo Theater, one of the most prestigious venues in the world of entertainment. Astonishingly, Jaheim emerged as the winner not just once, but three times a testament to his extraordinary vocal abilities and stage presence. Winning at the Apollo Theater was a dream come true for Jaheim, and it fueled his belief that he was on the cusp of stardom. His performances attracted attention from industry insiders, and many people began reaching out to him with offers to sign him to their record labels. It was a moment filled with promise and potential, as the music industry recognized the raw talent within Jaheim. However, despite the flurry of interest and tempting offers, Jaheim's journey to stardom faced its share of challenges. None of the initial record deals that came his way materialized into a successful partnership. At the age of 16, 
Jaheim Hoagland, faced one of the most profound heartbreaks anyone could experience. His mother, Julie, who had been a pillar of strength and support throughout his tumultuous upbringing, passed away. This devastating loss left Jaheim reeling, and he found himself slipping back into the old habits and circumstances that had previously led to his incarceration. In the aftermath of his mother's death, Jaheim's life took a disheartening turn as he became entangled in a cycle of legal troubles, repeatedly finding himself locked up. These tumultuous years were marked by personal turmoil and uncertainty, making it even more challenging for Jaheim to see a clear path forward. However, amid the darkness, a glimmer of hope and opportunity emerged. It was during this six-year period of personal turmoil that Jaheim's destiny took a remarkable turn. His demo tape, a testament to his undeniable talent, found its way into the hands of DJ KG, a member of the iconic hip-hop group Naughty by Nature. This serendipitous encounter would change the course of Jaheim's life forever. Recognizing the extraordinary potential within Jaheim, DJ KG made the pivotal decision to sign him to Divine Mill Records, a significant step towards fulfilling Jaheim's dream of a music career. It was a turning point in his life, and it marked the beginning of a new chapter filled with promise and opportunity. In 2001, Jaheim released his debut album, Ghetto Love, which showcased his soulful voice and undeniable talent. The album resonated deeply with audiences, and Jaheim's unique persona, characterized by baggy clothing and diamond chains, earned him the affectionate label of the thug of R&B. His authentic and emotionally charged music struck a chord with fans who appreciated his unapologetic approach to storytelling through song. Just a year later, in 2002, Jaheim followed up with his second album, Still Ghetto. This album featured the platinum-certified hit song Put That Woman First, a track that captivated audiences with its raw and relatable lyrics. Jaheim drew inspiration from his own experiences and the tumultuous relationships his mother had endured, allowing him to connect with listeners on a profoundly personal level. Fans eagerly embraced Jaheim's third album, eagerly awaiting his return to the music scene. His soulful voice, paired with his genuine lyrics, continued to resonate with audiences, solidifying his status as a prominent figure in the world of R&B. On June 14, 2004, a seemingly routine evening outside a 7-Eleven convenience store in Hillsborough Township, New Jersey, would change Jayheim's life. It was during this encounter that he had a run-in with law enforcement, he found himself facing a series of charges, including possession of 50 grams or less of a substance in his car and resisting the orders of the officers. The legal consequences of these charges led to Jaheim being sentenced to 90 days behind bars. However, Jaheim was not one to accept defeat easily. In 2005, he made the decision to appeal his conviction, seeking justice and fairness in the face of adversity. As the legal proceedings unfolded, it became evident that the initial arrest had been marred by procedural errors. It was revealed that the officer had not possessed the necessary legal grounds to search Jaheim's vehicle in the first place. In a moment of vindication, a judge recognized the injustice that had transpired and subsequently dismissed the charges against Jaheim. This decision provided some relief to the artist, as it meant that the substance conviction was overturned. While the legal battles had concluded favorably for Jaheim, he still had to navigate the aftermath of the incident. Despite the dismissal of the substance charges, Jaheim was placed under two years of probation as a residual consequence of the encounter with law enforcement. Additionally, he was required to attend an anger management program aimed at helping him address any underlying issues that may have contributed to his resistance during the arrest. Furthermore, Jaheim was tasked with writing an apology letter to the arresting officer as a measure of accountability for his behavior during that fateful encounter. For Jaheim, the experience served as a stark reminder of the complexities and challenges that can accompany fame and success. 
While the substance conviction was reversed, the incident left an indelible mark on his life, emphasizing the importance of resilience, self-improvement, and personal growth in the face of adversity. In 2005, Jahim faced yet another significant challenge that tested his resilience. While driving his luxury vehicle, he found himself in a harrowing accident involving a tractor trailer. The impact was so severe that it left his car completely totaled. The aftermath of this accident would cast a long shadow over his life, both personally and professionally. Even years after the accident, Jaheim continued to grapple with the physical and emotional repercussions. In an interview with the R&B Philly website, he candidly shared that he was still on the path to recovery. Some days were better than others, but the accident had left him with lingering issues, including a bothersome neck twitch. Seeking relief, Jaheim turned to a chiropractor for assistance, although his busy schedule managing his burgeoning career often prevented him from dedicating the time needed for his body to fully heal. Despite the physical challenges he faced, Jaheim was unwavering in his commitment to his music and his fans. He understood that he couldn't keep his dedicated supporters waiting, and he was determined to persevere through the adversity. To facilitate his creative process, Jaheim had the foresight to build a recording studio within his New Jersey residence, allowing him to continue crafting his music without interruption. In the midst of his recovery, Jaheim embarked on a creative journey, writing and co-producing his third album, which he fittingly titled Ghetto Classics. The album's name was a testament to Jaheim's deep-rooted love for the inner-city life that had shaped his experiences and music. He remained committed to his mission of chronicling the realities and struggles of urban life, using his music as a powerful platform for storytelling. In 2006, Ghetto Classics was released to the eager anticipation of fans worldwide. The album resonated profoundly with its audience, and its authenticity struck a chord with listeners. Ghetto Classics became a milestone in Jaheim's career, not only for its artistic excellence, but also because it achieved the remarkable feat of becoming his first number one album. Its debut week saw over 150,000 copies sold, a testament to Jaheim's enduring talent and the unwavering support of his fan base. In 2007, Jaheim made a significant career move, by leaving behind Divine Mill Records and signing a new contract with Atlantic Records. This transition marked a new chapter in his musical journey and presented fresh opportunities for artistic growth. Under his new record label, Jayheim was tasked with recording the DJ Don't remix alongside the legendary Gerald Levert for the soundtrack of Tyler Perry's film Why Did I Get Married? The collaboration with Gerald Levert, a respected figure in the R&B world, demonstrated Jaheim's continued commitment to delivering soulful and authentic music to audiences. Later that same year, Jaheim released his fourth studio album, The Makings of a Man. While Jaheim's previous works had enjoyed significant success, this album faced mixed critical reception. Never, one of the album's singles, peaked at number 76 on the Billboard Hot 100. Some critics, including the Pop Matters website, expressed the sentiment that Jaheim's songs about hustling and paternity disputes were becoming tired and cliched, suggesting a need for fresh creative direction. Amidst his musical pursuits, Jaheim also shared his aspirations outside of the music world. In 2007, he revealed plans to star in a Paramount film based on a true story, an exciting prospect that hinted at his versatility as an artist. However, it's worth noting that as of 2019, the movie mentioned in the interview had yet to be released, showcasing the unpredictable nature of the entertainment industry. Despite any potential diversions, Jaheim remained steadfast in his commitment to music. In an interview with Billboard magazine, he expressed his dedication to being a professional singer for at least the next 30 years. This unwavering passion for his craft led him back into the studio, where he continued to work diligently on his next musical project. The year 2010 marked a significant chapter in Jaheim's music career with the release of his album, Another Round. 
This album would go on to showcase his enduring talent and introduce one of his most beloved songs, Fiending My Way Back. The track, steeped in the emotional depth of early 70s soul music, resonated deeply with fans and critics alike. Its heartfelt lyrics and soulful melody made it an instant fan favorite and solidified Jaheim's reputation as a gifted R&B artist. Although Finding My Way Back only managed to reach number 95 on the Billboard Hot 100, its artistic merit did not go unnoticed. The song's emotional authenticity and musical excellence earned Yeheim three Grammy nominations, further validating his position as a respected and accomplished artist within the industry. However, even as Jayheim enjoyed critical acclaim and recognition for his music, 2010 presented new challenges for the singer. Just months after the release of Another Round, he found himself entangled in a legal matter that would have repercussions on both his personal life and his career. In a surprising turn of events, Jaheim was pulled over by law enforcement in New Jersey for driving at a speed of 65 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone. This traffic stop would take a more serious turn when officers detected a strong odor emanating from his vehicle. Concerned by the smell, they requested Jaheim's consent to search the vehicle which he granted. During the search, law enforcement officials discovered a substance underneath the driver's seat of the vehicle. In 2013, Jaheim made a noticeable return to the music scene with the release of his album, Appreciation Day. The album was anticipated by fans eager to hear more from the R&B sensation. Jaheim shared with Magic 102.3 radio station that the title track, A Jana Factor, was deeply inspired by a lost love. It was a poignant and emotional piece that showcased Jaheim's ability to convey his feelings through his music. Despite the anticipation surrounding the album, Appreciation Day did not meet the commercial success and critical acclaim that Jaheim had experienced with his previous works. The disappointment of the album's reception was undoubtedly a setback for the artist, and it marked a challenging period in his career. Undeterred by the setbacks, Jaheim took matters into his own hands and made a strategic move in 2014. He relaunched his own record label, Julie's Dream Music Group, signaling a new phase in his career where he had more creative control and autonomy. This move was soon followed by a promising partnership, as his label signed a deal in conjunction with BMG Records. In 2016, Jaheim released his seventh studio album, intriguingly titled Struggle Love. The album showcased his commitment to his craft and his desire to connect with his audience on a personal level. However, his artistic evolution was not the only thing that caught the public's attention during this period. Jaheim unveiled a new look that deviated from his previous image, which sparked quite a buzz. Unfortunately, this new appearance did not receive a warm reception from the public. Charlemagne of the Breakfast Club humorously crowned Jaheim the donkey of the day for his unconventional hairstyle choice. Jaheim, in an attempt to defend his new look, engaged in a series of clapbacks, but rather than mitigating the criticism, it led to even more ridicule from online users. This wasn't the first time that Jaheim faced online backlash. In a memorable incident, he attended Whitney Houston's funeral wearing an outfit that drew considerable attention and humor on the Internet. Reports suggest that he was denied access inside the event, but he still received an outpouring of love and support from fans who were standing outside the venue. Jaheim's presence in the mainstream music scene had seemingly dwindled with several years passing since his last major musical release. This hiatus from the spotlight persisted until March 2019, when an intriguing and somewhat bewildering story emerged, drawing considerable attention from both fans and the media. It all began when an Instagram user named Gordon Davis shared an unusual encounter with Jaheim. Davis claimed that while in Atlanta, he had summoned an Uber outside of his hotel, and to his astonishment, Jaheim turned out to be the driver. 
According to Davis, Jaheim had disclosed that he was in Atlanta for a brief visit to see a relative, but had run out of funds. In an effort to secure enough money for his return home, he made the decision to drive for Uber. This revelation sent shockwaves through the entertainment world, leaving many to believe that Jaheim had fallen on hard times. The notion of a well-known R&B artist taking on a role as an Uber driver raised eyebrows and prompted concern among fans who wondered about the state of his career and financial well-being. However, there were those who questioned the authenticity of the story. Vin Rock, a member of the renowned hip-hop group Naughty by Nature, addressed the situation and refuted the claims made by Gordon Davis. In an interview with Heavy.com, Vin Rock dismissed the story as fake news, originating from an uncredited blog. He emphasized that Jayheim had the capacity to earn a substantial income through live performances, suggesting that he could easily bring in around $15,000 per week from his music career alone. This led to speculation as to why Jayheim would need to resort to driving for Uber if his earnings from music were indeed as substantial as Vin Rock suggested. While he found success and recognition through his performances on the road, he revealed that the financial rewards from his album releases were not as substantial as one might expect. In an interview with AllHipHop.com, he candidly stated that he earned basically nothing for the albums he had released over the years. This revelation highlighted the often complex and financially challenging dynamics that artists face in the music business. However, Jaheim's career trajectory took a different turn, and he found a new sense of contentment within the industry. By running his own record label, he gained better control over his music and creative direction. In a 2017 interview with Page Six, he expressed his satisfaction with his new position, stating, I love the business. I just don't like certain people in the business. This move allowed him to assert greater independence and creative autonomy, reflecting his desire to navigate the industry on his own terms. Jaheim's departure from the mainstream music scene also coincided with significant lifestyle changes. In 2018, he unveiled a transformed appearance featuring lighter colored hair and a notably slimmer physique. Unfortunately, this new look sparked public scrutiny and mockery, with some making assumptions about his reasons for the changes. In response to the criticisms and speculations, Jaheim took to his Instagram platform to address the situation. He emphatically clarified that his transformation had nothing to do with substances or any unhealthy habits. In fact, he proudly shared that he had embraced a meat-free diet, attributing his weight loss and physical changes to this dietary shift, in a bid to inspire others and share his journey towards a healthier lifestyle. He even posted a cooking tutorial that included the preparation of dishes utilizing whole banana peels, showcasing his commitment to holistic wellness. One notable incident that garnered considerable attention occurred during an interview with Sway at Hot 97. When the topic of his alleged relationships with other men was broached, Yeheim's reaction was intense and immediate. He reportedly began throwing equipment around in a fit of frustration and anger. In retrospect, Yaheim acknowledged that he was younger at the time and that people had deliberately provoked him to elicit such a reaction. He realized that these rumors were likely intended to manipulate him into acting out of character, causing him to regret his response. Throughout his career, rumors and controversies surrounding J. Himes' behavior have persisted within the music industry. Notably, singer Selena Johnson recounted an incident from 2005 when she claimed to have almost gotten into a physical altercation with Jayheim over a song credit dispute. This incident shed light on the tensions and conflicts that can arise in the competitive and high-stakes world of the music business. Additionally, radio host Russ Parr shared an anecdote about an interview with Jaheim in which the artist's behavior reportedly became disruptive. Parr claimed that when he asked Jaheim to stop talking over other people and dominating the interview, Jaheim reacted by knocking over the microphone and hitting a table before abruptly storming out.
this incident highlighted the challenges of managing the dynamics of live interviews and the potential for clashes when strong personalities come into play. Jeheim's desire for recognition and respect in the music industry has been a driving force throughout his career. He has consistently expressed his aspiration to make a meaningful contribution to the world of music. In an interview with Essence magazine, he conveyed his wish to be remembered for giving something to the game, highlighting his commitment to leaving a lasting impact through his artistry. Jaheem's fans have played an essential role in supporting his journey, remaining loyal and steadfast in their dedication to his music. Their unwavering enthusiasm and appreciation for his work have been a source of inspiration and motivation for the artist. However, amid his quest for artistic recognition, Jaheim has faced challenges and uncertainties on the business side of his career. In June 2019, he found himself embroiled in controversy when he reportedly failed to appear for three consecutive nights at a St. Louis music festival, offering no official explanation for his absence. The abrupt cancellations left concertgoers disappointed and frustrated, with organizers ultimately providing refunds to those who had purchased tickets. Despite these setbacks, Jaheim continued to make appearances in the music scene. He was featured on Angie Stone's 2019 album, Full Circle, contributing his distinct vocal talent to the project. However, fans eagerly awaited news of when Jaheim would deliver another studio album of his own. In July 2019, Jaheim took to his Instagram platform to release a statement, providing some insight into his current situation. In the statement, he announced that he would not be performing in the near future, citing a need to make changes and adjustments. He cryptically wrote, I'm changing a few things, then we shall meet again. This message left fans curious about the direction he intended to take and the changes he aimed to implement in his career. What do you think about what happened to Jaheim Hoagland? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.